Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06, the map is Westfold and the matchup is Rohan against Isengard, good against evil El Clasico. Before further ado, let's get it started. On the right side of the map we have the purple Isengard player Principino and his opening at the left side is the green Rohan player Stevie. Both of these players are Battle for Middle Earth experts, so they know everything about this game. That's why my expectations for this game are pretty high. You're gonna have one farm start from the Rohan player into the Hobbit Mary. He's gonna split his peasants, one of them is gonna grab the settlement in the middle of the map and the other one is moving to this side of the map to grab the second settlement. On the other side the Isengard player Principino is starting with one Uruk pit only, capturing this mill first and moving forward in order to catch those peasants early on. He is obviously starting with the Warchant while the Rohan player is starting with the Draft to give those peasants the weapons they need, but they won't still have a chance against Urukai in a 1v1 situation. He is now moving with one of his Lumber Mill workers to the second mill at the bottom right side. And that's why, what you need to do in this matchup guys. You can't afford to capture all the mills first, you need to play slow, but you also have to play defensively early on against Rohan, because he will be spamming a lot of extra peasants from the farms inside, but also from the farms outside of his base. Indeed we have only one farm start so he's gonna make a lot of extra peasants but first of all he's capturing all the mills, all the farms I mean. There is one more to capture at the bottom left side and one more at the back side of the base of the Rohan player Stevie. And like mentioned before Urukai are able to win against every single starting unit from every single faction. They are also much faster so running away from them is not an option as well. You might as well just stay and fight. And that's the second peasant battalion he's now being able to kill. That means those mills are untied so far. He's gonna get, uh, capture now this one at the top side of the map as well. There is one more to be captured around this side. As Isengard you wanna uh, make sure that you don't capture too many mills if you are sure that you can't protect them. So getting three mills under your control and keeping them alive is actually more than enough for the evil factions to get the money they need. And we're gonna have a lot of extra Urukai coming until the Uruk pit hits level 2. Then we're gonna see the transition into the pikemen because they're gonna be needed in order to deal with the Rohirrim from the Rohan player Stevie. It's a nice matchup Rohan against Isengard on a map like this. There are a lot of creeps on this map. We have one troll layer in the middle and a lot of goblin layers and work layers protecting those outposts. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Actually the goblin creep has been already creeped by the Rohan player I'm assuming. Yeah he has already one level 2. Rohan Peasant Battalion on the field and he was almost able to get the heal unlocked as well from the spellbook. Like mentioned a couple of times, he can afford to make extra peasants all the time. Uh, he was actually trying to lure the Urukai to the troll layer but the Isengard player Principino is not falling for it. <laughs> Alright, he was also never able to capture this farm just yet but I think it's fine because he has so many farms already on the field including the farm inside the space. And the first Rohirrim battalion from the stable is gonna be joining the battlefield pretty soon. The map is looking purple for now, but that's gonna change once the Rohirrim are on the field. We have also one crossbow man, he's gonna go for the creep. Warchain is gonna be used. He might capture this outpost now and put those crossbow men inside of that. And I think that's gonna be also his plan. But what you need to do is wait. You don't wanna put them inside immediately, but if you do, there is a chance that they don't shoot automatically. That's what he's doing now, he's waiting, which is smart. Uh, peasants, by the way, are or swordsmen, Urukai, Gondor soldiers, and even Oryx, they are able to deal a lot of damage to the outpost. They're actually bursting it down, but they won't be able to finish it off. The Hobbit, in the meantime, was able to kill the Lumber Mill workers around this side. And if you don't have any workers for the Lumber Mill, you won't also generate any kind of resources. The Rohan player Stevie is now, you know, creeping the work lane at the top left side of the map. He is filling up his base at the same time, has pretty much 1, 2, 3, 4 farms under his control for now. We have some, uh, you know, spearman units, I can't even talk, guys, sorry. And the thing is, unlike against Gonzo, this is not gonna be enough to keep the map control, because Rohan player can easily counter that by making extra peasants. And remember, the spearman units, the pikemen in this case from Isengard, are very weak against swordsmen, and even against peasants, and even against orcs. That's why the Isengard's player at some point will need the Work Riders or a lot of Berserkers to deal with the Peasants. But he has a great amount of resource income right now and he can afford it. 
The Rohan player now has Trigo hit him on the field. He's creeping, trying to get the power points for the elves. That's the goal. The elves are gonna be nice to fight for the map control, to summon them to kill the pikemen. Because I think early on the map control fights are gonna be the most important ones. Until he has upgrades purchased, there is no need to rush the Isengard base. And even if you can go for a rush, if Isengard keeps those Lumber Mills alive, you know, outside of his base, he will be in a great spot. And he will be having the sustain in his economy to actually keep rebuilding all the time. He has even one outpost under his control with two extra furnaces. So the resource income for the Isengard's player is looking great. However, he also has to make units all the time. Maybe Lourdes could be a nice choice to defend against peasants, but also against Rohirrim. He has to avoid now with the Berserker to get trampled. Rohan player is committing against the Vork player. Can he actually burst it down? That's the big question. And actually, he was able to get the last hit. And also all the money, but he was also able to save both the Rohirrim. That's actually huge. And now the Vorks are attacking the Isengard units. Which is a pretty nice situation, by the way, for the Rohan player's TV. He's making more and more uh, Rohirrim all the time. He was also able to get now Armory up on the field, guys. He has enough money to purchase all the upgrades at pretty much the same time. And it looks like we have no more creeps left beside the troll who is homeless in the middle of the map. And the Rohan player was able to get almost the power points he needs for the Elven Allies summon. He's gonna get there, all he has to do is kill a couple of these pikemen with the peasants and he should be absolutely fine and that's why uh, Principino has to make sure to get enough uh, you know work riders on the field in order to keep defending himself almost the power points he needs for the Elven Elias summon he has them now he can use them pretty much in a situation like this because even um, the work riders can deal with them without upgrades and without the war chant which is on cooldown but ideally you want to use it when you go for a rush you want to have the spot of the Rohirrim to achieve something afterwards. Because if you use it randomly on a map, it's nice to kill some pikemen. But there is no follow-up afterwards to kill the mills. Elves, they will need a lot of time to kill a mill, even with the swords. That's why you need to wait. He's gonna use the Elven allies to actually catch Lourdes in the middle of the map. There is no backup. And there are no pikemen close by. Now he has heavy armor purchase. Lourdes is only level 2. He has no carnage available yet. For that, you need to get him level 3 first. And it looks like Lourdes... Is gonna be taken down. That means there is no counterplay anymore to the Theoden guys. There is no cripple. And now those elves, but also the Rohirrim have the leadership from Theoden, which means 50% increased damage and 50% increased armor. They have also forged plates now. The towers are gonna get melted down in a second. And the archers here from the summon of elves, they can easily deal with those pikemen, no big deal. And even Warchant not gonna help you out big time here. Because Warchant is pretty much the same stance what you get from Theoden all alone. He is able to kill a lot of furnaces slash towers. The Vork Riders are committing now. It looks like they are purchasing the heavy armor first, which is smart. But it might be too late and too little to defend such an attack. Rohan can just keep going. The bright side on the bright side, look at the map at the bottom left side of your screen. Isengard has such a great map control. That means if the Rohan player won't be able to finish him off in a situation like this, he will have enough sustain in his economy to actually rebuild everything. The good thing for the Rohan player's TV is that this guy, Theodine, is already level almost 3. Level 4 is gonna be the time for him to shine because that's gonna unlock the glorious charge. Lourdes is getting revived obviously, no, he's actually not reviving Lourdes just yet. The armory was also able to survive this attack and for now the Rohan player has to disengage. Ideally you wanna have your horseman shields purchase first, which is gonna increase your durability from the Rohirrim against archer, uh, archers, archers, <laughs> that sounds so wrong. <laughs> and that includes also the arrows, arrows from those towers around the uh, Isengard's castle. He's gonna rebuild the uh, Vork Pit and he also lost the Uruk Pit, which hurts him a lot, because the Uruk Pit's level 1, you can't afford to make any pikemen. That's why he's making crossbowmen first. Crossbowmen are gonna be leveling up this Uruk Pit way, way faster than recruiting the Urukai, by the way. All you need are two crossbowmen and one Urukai and your Uruk pit is gonna be level 2. And it's a very important building after all, that's why you need to actually build it in the back side of your base. Because this way it's gonna be harder for the Rohan player to reach the site and take it down. Now the Rohan player's TV has to make sure to keep, for, uh, to keep fighting for the map control. And Rohirrim archers are gonna be a nice uh, counter unit to those pikemen and even the Vork riders. And Stevie has a nice micro with those horses. I think he didn't lose any horse so far just yet. 
all the three battalions of Royerim. Oh, that's a, oh my god, that's so lucky here from the green Rohan player Stevie. He was almost running it down with one of his level 4 Rohirrim. Levels in BFME 1 are way more important than in BFME 2. That's why keeping your units alive, especially when they are highly leveled, is very important. Trust me on that one, guys. Isengard has actually all the outposts under his control, has an incredible amount of resource income, has now enough power points for the Freezing Rain as well. He might also go for the, for the Field of Fires, but I think against Rohan you need the rain to negate the leadership of Tyrion. Otherwise, those Rohirrim are gonna hit like an absolute track. Trust me on that one. Alright, uh, there are no arches inside this outpost. That means this Rohirrim, they can be slowly but surely taking down this outpost. No big deal. There is a protection from one pikeman with full upgrades. Heavy armor, forge blades and even the Vanakiri upgrade. And in a 1v1 situation, obviously the pikemen are gonna be always coming ahead. If they have, if they have the upgrades they need. Uh, you don't wanna go for heavy armor for them. You want to actually go for Forge Blades. Now you can turn and fight with the Warchant. You can easily fight against those Rohirrim even if they are level 5, by the way, guys. Because Pikemen are just a hard counter unit to the Cavalry units from every single faction in BFME games generally. Not only in BFME 1. Yeah, like mentioned before, he has enough power points for the Freezing Rain. But there is absolutely no need right now to use it. You want to use it either if you go for an attack or if you have to defend yourself against a massive rush. He's now going for some combos, which is smart. He needs also some pikemen definitely in between the combos to have something against the Rohirrim when they go for a trample with the Elvin Wood potentially. The Rohan player has Elvin allies, the drafts, the heal and two and a half power points collected afterwards. But the map control is nice for the Isengard's player. The thing is, you need to go for a fast siege on the Rohan base. You don't want to waste too much time. If you have a lead with Isengard, you need to try to finish the game as soon as you possibly can. Because the good factions are scaling quite hard in the late game, especially Rohan with the Glorious Charge, Theorin with the Rohirrim Arches, he's now looking to recruit from the stable, which are gonna be a nice counter to the pikemen and to the Warcriders. With that being said, Rohan will have enough units, or the right units in this case, under his control, to reclaim the map control from the Isengard's player, Principino. And also Rohirrim are scaling way harder than the Warcriders, because remember, the Warcriders Riders are not able to purchase the Horseman Shields, unlike the Gondonites and also the Rohirrim from the Rohan faction. Elven Allies is ready. The Elven Allies in the late game is not gonna be that effective. Against upgraded units, they are not dealing too much damage, but they're gonna be still annoying to deal with for Principino for sure. There is no Archer Battalion inside this outpost as well. That means this outpost is gonna go down. We have some upgraded uh, Rohirrim Marches now. Again, the fire is the weakness of the pikemen, so they're gonna slowly but surely be gone from the map. That means Isengard, regardless what he's doing, I think he's gonna keep losing the map control all the time. That's why it's so important for him to actually draw the attention from Rohan around this side. Going for this siege is the right call. Ideally, you wanna make sure that you have also Saruman under your control. Saruman is gonna be a nice hero to have against the Rohirrim. Because you can go for a fireball, if they go for a trample, you can use Wormsong on them while they are trampling down your combos. Because the Rohan player is gonna definitely try to defend himself. He's gonna try to defend himself before the Isengard player can make it into the base. Because once the Isengard player is inside the base, it's so much harder for Rohan to defend. The only way he can defend this is by going for a trample with the Elvin Wood, which will negate the leadership of these units. That's the only way. They are also glowing for some reason. Did he war chant them? No, I think Lourdes is kinda level 5 or something. I don't know. I don't see Lourdes though on the field. Hobbit is still doing a swing at the bottom right side. I like it. Eden is looking to get GC and GC, ladies and gentlemen, is unlocked. That's a huge power spike, guys. Trust me on that one. Now the horses from Rohan are pretty much invincible. 75% armor stacking up with the 50% armor from the leadership of Theodine. That means they have more than double armor right now. And with the Elven Wood, which is available, he is now going for the Death and Glory moment. Elven Allies is being used, the Pikemen have to get in position, he's gonna use the Rain, but Elven Wood is coming in clutch, what a beautiful trample from the Rohan player Stevie, and he is actually wiping out those combos in seconds. He can't afford to use Tainted Land, because if he does, the Freezing Rain is gonna become absolutely useless, trust me guys. Because if you use Tainted Land, Tainted Land is a double-edged sword, you know? Rain land is gonna be nice for the situation to get your leadership back, but if you use rain afterwards, all the Rohan player has to do is step on your tainted land, 
and leave it afterwards. That's gonna give him the leadership back. That's why leader, uh, you know, Tainted Land against Rohan is pretty bad. Same against Mordor, for example. Even though against Mordor it's okay, because trolls, they can't reclaim their leadership. But Rohan, against Rohan, Tainted Land with Isengard in a 1v1 situation is pretty, pretty bad. I mean, on the bright side, Isengard, again, like mentioned several times, he has a lot of resources. He was also finally able to recruit Saruman now. I think all he has to do now is wait for the Warchant cooldown and go inside the base. But he has only broken one part of the wall so far. Uh, that means Rohan player can potentially afford to rebuild that, which will cost him 2,000 resources. Now he's gonna fight for the for the map control, the outposts, they're gonna be now taken down in a second. Again, the Rohirrim archers are being very helpful, Theodian was able to survive. I think he didn't cripple him down, explosive mines are on the field, and Lords is level 3, level 5 is gonna be a huge power spike for the Isengard hero Lords. That's gonna unlock his leadership, which means the Nerve allied units around Lords are gonna be able to deal 60% increased damage. Okay, the mine is gonna make it to this wall. Now with Saruman or one of these combos, he can actually make it BOOM! <laughs> okay, I mean, on the other side, Isengard has to make sure to not lose the entire map control, guys, because Rohan will have a lot of farms and he will have to sustain, but there we go. Okay, another trample, you have to avoid being on the land, by the way. One combo with leadership of Saruman only, Warchen is gonna be used, Saruman is being the target of the Rohirrim Arches, he is getting targeted down, Wormtongue is being used, nice one, but I think it's too little, too late, there is no heal for the Isengard faction and Saruman has been taken down, Lourdes is gonna be taken down next, and look at this damage, look at the power of Rohan with the Glorious Charge. Yodin was not even getting crippled down and Cloud Break is gonna be unlocked now from the Rohan player's TV, which not only gonna slow down the enemy units, no, but it's also gonna reduce their armor, which means killing the enemy units now is gonna be way, way easier for the Rohan players TV guys. And this Rohirrim Arches, they are hitting like an absolute truck once they have some levels on them. This one is gonna hit level 5 very, very soon. Nice micro here from Stevie. I mean, Stevie has to just make sure to keep those horses alive. That's very important because every single one of them is actually quite highly ranked. This one is even almost level 10, guys. Theodin is very impactful as a support hero for the Rohirrim slash Rohirrim Archers to boost them with damage and tankiness to make them survive while they're hitting like a track. During all this time, Isengard player was able to fight for the map control with the Warcriders. He has, again, you know, still three outposts under his control. He can still purchase this one if he wants to. But at some point, Rohan will have a lot... And there we go, guys. Look at the slowdown now. That's a perfect situation to, example, um, to make an example of this one. The Warcriders or every cavalry unit in battle for middle Earth 1 has the same amount of movement speed. But if you want to chase down in a Rohan against Rohan, Rohan against Gondor matchup, for example, as well, if you want to make sure to be able to catch the enemy cavalry units, all you have to do is use Cloud Break. It's going to make them slow like crazy, <laughs> and you can run them down like crazy as well. And Rohan player Stevie now is only 8 power points away from getting the Army of the Dead unlocked. Nice micro here, beautiful micro from the Rohan player. You know, keeping all his horses alive all the time, which is the key to victory in this matchup for sure. I mean, Isengard is crazily rich, trust me on that one. He is sitting on 11 power points as well, but staying on an Elven Woods like this is always a big mistake. It looks like you want to go inside, which might be a bad idea. However, I think if he gets some more units on the field, like three combos, for example, with two pikemen and Lord's leadership hopefully being unlocked very soon as well. And if you just go inside the base and focuses nothing but the buildings, with the help of the Warcriders, he can actually finish off the game. I mean, finish off the base, and Rohan has only one outpost under his control, and his resources are not looking that great either. Alvin Wood is available, and that's why Isengard has to make it inside the base if he wants to have a chance to, to win this fight. Otherwise, he's gonna use Alvin Wood once again, Glorious Charge, this time Theodin got crippled down, Rain is being used, Land might be used in a situation like this, Rohirrim are going for a trample anyway, Lord is taking way too much damage here from the Rohirrim Arches, Theodin is in a safe spot, Glorious Charge is not only affecting the Rohirrim, but also Theodin himself, which increases his uh, armor big time. Nice micro here with the horses. He has to make sure to survive with the level 7-1. One, one. The level 7 horse has been taken down. But the farms are getting focused down. The level 10 horses here. With the help of the Rohirrim marches in the back line. Are killing everything from the Isengard's player. Everything is going down. Lord is finally level 4 now. He's only one level away from getting the leadership unlocked. Which is going to be a huge power spike for the 
He got crippled down once again, but there is nothing that can actually take him down. That's the problem. Carnage was already used. There is no Carnage available for Lourdes. And Lourdes, there is no way he can make it out from this situation. And he's going down. The power points from Stevie are rising to the sky as he's only 3.5 power points away from getting the Army of the Dead Summon unlocked from the spellbook that is able to change the outcome of the game. There's also Arches inside this one with fighter upgrades. They are actually killing those pikemen in no time. Now with the leadership of the statue in the backside, they're gonna hit like an absolute track. With the help now of this Rohirrim and the fact that Isengard lost pretty much everything, this outpost is gonna be taken down. On the bright side for Isengard, the base is already wide open. So you have to keep up the pressure. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice in this commentary videos nowadays. <laughs> I'm getting old. And anyways, yeah, you know, you wanna keep up the pressure all the time. Like, make some units, go in, go out, and keep the Rohan player around this side. Until you get your Balrog unlocked, and he's only 3 power points away from this point. Because winning now against Rohan is gonna be very difficult. Um, especially uh, if he, if you are fighting on an open area in which you can use the Elven Hood. And go for a trample, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's so important to keep some units inside your base. And go for a small fight. Uh, because, remember, Isengard is a faction that gains power points from losing heroes as well. Like, if you lose Saruman, for example, I think if you lose the Saruman, he, will have, he would have almost the power points he needs for the Balrog Summon. The problem is, you wanna be the one who has to, oh, that's what I'm talking about, that's what you need to do. Go for small fights and don't lose too much, just go back if you have to. He was also using Warchant, by the way, on these War Riders. Kill the well if you can. It's nice to get a lot of power points. Look at this well, it's getting demolished in a second. 18 power points collected now, 2 power points away from the Balrog Summon. But don't risk the biscuit, don't overcommit. Make sure to survive with your units. There are so many ways out of this base, you don't have to go from the gate. You can always run around it. Very well done here from Principino. You will be able to save both his work riders because Cloudbreak is still on cooldown. Uh, two outposts under control from Rohan, but one of them is being taken down. What, Steve, what Principino is trying to do is he wanna make sure to kill all the outposts. That means if Balrog is gonna be able to finish off this base, he will automatically win the game regardless you know, how many power points or how many, how much money and how many units the Rohan player TV has up on the field, guys. Because remember, if you don't have a castle slash outpost slash camp, you will automatically lose the game. Even if you have like 10 units, 15 units on the field, doesn't change anything. Cloudbreak is available. Elvin Wood is available and Glorious Charge is available as well. And I think that's gonna be a Wombo combo situation in a fight like this. Tarmon is looking for a beautiful. Oh, he's going ham, guys. He's going inside the jeans now. Look the power points. He will have from this fight enough power points for the army of the dead for sure. Oh, nice stop here. Glorious Charge is being used. Elvin Wood, one of the Rohirrim, has been taken over. Lords has to make sure to cripple down Tildin if he can, but Saruman has been taken down already. Fighting on the Elven Wood means you have no more leadership unlocked. Army of the Dead is available now, which is going to be used instantly to kill the army from Isengard. Now, Principino has to make sure to wait until the army of the Dead is gone before he uses the Balrog, guys. It's very, very important because Balrog is going to die in a second against AOD. That's the short name from Army of the Dead. I mean, this is educational as well, guys. You have to leave a like on these videos. Come on, dude. You might also use Balrog defensively, by the way, in a situation like this, which I don't recommend, but maybe this is the way to go. Army of the Dead is still remaining on the field. He's gonna use Balrog offensively, definitely. And I think with the help of Balrog, he will be able to finish off the space. However, keep in mind that Rohan has still one outpost under his control, which is getting attacked now. Rohan has to react for this one. He has to now go back and save this outpost. If he loses this outpost and the base at the same time, the game is gonna be over for Stevie regardless how strong he is in a situation like this. Balrog is able to kill the base all himself. He has to make sure to use the Ignite, which is gonna be a boost of 200% increased damage, guys, which is insane. He has enough time to finish off the base and potentially even to fly to this outpost, but the Rohan player is gonna try to rebuild the Citadel at, this, at the last second. Rain is being used now defensively, the base is being targeted, but look at this damage from these towers and furnace is level 3. The Rohan player is forced to retreat. The main base from the Rohan player has been taken down and all he, what is left is one single outpost, guys. And he has not that much money as well, because the map is still looking purple to me. Like, you know, Principino has almost the entire map. And I think what he can do now is build multiple Uruk pits slash uh, work, uh, work, you know, 
pits at the same time in order to keep up the spam. You can also go for the Devastation slash um, Field of Fires to increase your resource income even more. Field of Fires is nice on a map like Westfall. It's going to give you a great amount of sustain in your, in your economy as long as you have some of the Islamic mills under your control. He's going to try to rebuild the fortress from the base, from the main base. But the problem is, Principino has barely any units remaining on the field, guys. He has almost no units, and there comes the end summon. Tribuild and his gang is spotting the Rohan against Isengard. If this is not El Clasico, I don't know what is. Field of Fires is being used. Uh, it's a passive ability which is going to increase your resource income from those Lumber Mills by 100%, guys. Every resource building is shining bright like a diamond. Look at this fire. Furnaces, Lumber Mills, they are burning for more resources. The ants are coming in clutch. They don't care about your arrows, guys. If you don't have fire to upgrade against the ants, they can tank those normal arrows for days. And they have incredible amount of DPS against buildings. And the fortress is going to be taken down the second it was built up from the Isengard's player Principino. During all this time, the Rohan player was able to destroy this outpost and also to destroy this outpost at the top left side. And because he has not enough units on the field, because look at this. 84 from possibly 400 command points from the Isengard's player. He lost the Uruk pit, he lost the Warg pit. Without the fortress, you can't rebuild anything in the in battle for Middle Earth 1. Uh, that's why you need to make Uruk pit slash Warg pit in an outpost like this or this one. Rohan is reloading his army up to that very, very fast. I mean, he has a crazy army anyway. Lord is finally level 5, guys. You can cripple him down, maybe cripple, 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 cripple. Oh, he had the chance, but I think he was not able to see. And the ants are gone now, finally. And that means Isengard will be in a safe spot, kind of, for now. There is a level 10 Rohirrim Battalion with full upgrades, guys. It's so tanky while it's dealing so much damage, especially with Theorian being around. Cripple! Very well done. Glorious Charge is available, if I'm not mistaken. He has to use it. Oh, okay, let's... But he can easily kill those pikes now. Like, level 10 with Glorious Charge, you have no chance. He's gonna draw the sword, but look the damage they're gonna deal now to Lords. Lords is getting bursted down. That's the scary part of Rohirrim or of every... Or of every single unit in Battle for Middle Earth 1 once they have a leadership. Plus, they have the level 10. Level 10 is such a crazy power spike, guys. This outpost at the bottom right side is going to be taken down. Rohan was able to reclaim the map control. Look at how many farms he has on the fields now. One, two, three, four, five. Five farms. He's killing now the Lumber Mills left and right. Beautiful Wizard Plus here from the young Saruman. I mean, young is relative, right? I think he is pretty old. <laughs> Can he take him down though with Fireball? That's the question. It looks like the Rohirrim, they will be able once again from Stevie to survive. Okay, Army of the Dead is back up in the business. Uh, and also Balrog is back up in the business. This this is the reason why Rohan has to make sure to have at least three outposts on each side. Because if you have only these two outposts, what the Isengard player can do, he can use Balrog here. One breath fire is gonna be you know more than enough to finish off this entire outpost. Then he can fly to the second outpost and finish off this one as well. That's why the Rohan player has either to buy the space back, which he can't afford right now because look his money. Or he has to make sure to have at least one outpost in each side of the map. If he wants to be able to survive against the next Balrog summon. Okay, that was a nice uh, warm tongue. Into the war chant. Alright, alright. That, that, that will be nice. It will do it, I guess. Uh, he's gonna try to finish off this outpost. But I think he's losing a lot of time. Because the time remaining from the from the control of the warm tongue is going down super, super fast. I think he won't be able to make it. They are level 10 though. They have a lot of damage output. Uh, Army of the Dead is available, remember, it can also be used against the Balrog. But the control is gone now and Saruman kinda doomed himself. Fireball was used already, Wizard Blast is gonna be used, but not even going off because the damage output from those Rohirrim is actually insane! They are hitting like an absolute truck, guys! The map is looking green to me and what a game! Soon he will have the money he needs to buy the base back and... He's gonna use the Balrog defensively, just why not? The thing is, he can't finish off the game with Balrog all alone, and he was not able to make any more units lately. He's gonna revive his Saruman potentially once again. He has to keep making units, but at some point you lose your control of the game. Because you have to pay attention about every single thing in BFME 1, especially on a map like Westworld, which is one of the bigger maps. It was a bad Breathfire, by the way, he only was able to kill one farm. 
the outpost is going down. He can, you know, still fly to this one and finish off this one. But, you know, he has still this one under his control, guys. So, okay, Vork Riders were actually getting killed from this Alps. It looks like the Isengard player was trying to buy the base before Rohan can do it. But Rohan can't even afford to buy it yet. Uh, Balrog has to fly to the sky. Uh, he can fly over this hill, no big deal. That's a big fly, guys. He's a big boy. Look at this. He's coming. Breath fire maybe before he goes down. But he, it looks like he's not paying attention and the outpost will be saved for now. And even if he would, you know, be able to destroy this one, remember Stevie has still this one at the top left side. Which has the protection of this Rohirrim with level 10 and stuff. Theodin is still alive. He's there with one of the Rohirrim level almost 9. Now he can use the AOD to tank the towers. And that's gonna be also the case. Use the glorious charge with Theodin and go for the finish of this main castle of Isengard. Who will not be defeated because he has also two outposts under his control. But the thing is that currently Rohan has much stronger units on the field. He has much more units on the field. And also the good factions in BFM1 in the late scheme, they have a lot of summons, right? They have ants, they have elves. Gondo has even eagles to summon. So the reinforcement summon from Isengard or from Mordor does not exist. You have no way of getting more units on the field from your power points. While the evil faction can only summon one guy and that's the Balrog himself, you know? On the, on the bright side for the evil, you have a lot of ways to boost your eco. Like industry is a nice way to get more money. Devastation is a nice way to get more money. Scavenger from Mordor or Field of Fires from Isengard are also nice ways to increase your resource income. Lord is fighting against Rohirrim Archers. And you can see the heroes in BFME 1, in compared to BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, are less impactful, especially in the late game, in a one in as a single hero against upgraded units. While the heroes in BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, I think they are just much more impactful in every stage of the game. And even against upgraded units, they are much more you know impactful. I think there is not a single normal unit in Rise of the Witch King that would be able to kill like Lourdes in a 1v1 situation, you know, especially when the Lourdes is level 5. Unlike in a situation like this, in which one row hit him all alone, without any leadership can actually fight against Lourdes and take him down. Okay, and the end summon this time from the Rohan player Stevie. And I can't believe it, guys, he was also able to buy this beast, by the way. Like, map control is everything, and the second Isengard lost the map control, the game was turning around. Like, the map is at, you know... For the majority of the game, the map was looking purple, which was the color of Isengard player Principino. But now it's the other way around. Actually, he was also buying the other base now. They switched the castles. What a game. What a beautiful, beautiful game. Let me know, guys, about your opinion about this game in the comment section down below. I would love to read them. Let me also know in the comments down below if you want to see more BFME content in the future. I have some replays I can cast for you if you are interested. Uh, I would love to read your opinions about this one. And it looks like the game is gonna be over once the Uruk Pit is going down. That was the last outpost remaining from the Isengard player Principio. No, I take it back because I'm dumb. He was just be able to buy the base. I forgot about this one. But the base has zero protection. He has nothing to defend the base with. And all the furnaces, unlike from this castle, which was recently destroyed, are only level one. But taking them down is way, way easier. And they are also not able to shoot down at the Rohirrim or Theoden or you know, pretty much any other Rohan unit right now. Cloudbreak is being used for the GG memes and what an incredible performance from both the players. It was looking so bad for Rohan and it's a nice map for Isengard after all. There are a lot of settlements but also a nice map for Rohan because he was able to get Theoden level 4. Had also a great amount of resource income with so many farms outside. And even though we can't see the end game statistics, but let me tell you that much. I'm 100% sure that Isengard had at least double the money, if not triple the money from Rohan. But it's about how you use the units. Balrog summon. He's gonna fly to the death of Principino. GG well played from Stevie. Well deserved the victory. What a, what a beautiful, beautiful game. And that's one of the Hall of Fames in my channel. One of, the better, one of the better games, one of the best games I was able to cast so far. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did, and if you are looking for more BFME content in the future, please don't forget to sub on to the channel and leave a like on this video. i see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.